Um, before we talk about the future, let's talk a little bit about the past. So when I started um, you know, going on the web and, and, and being part of the web 20 years, 20 plus years ago, um, and you know, being part of it, I'd, I'd go on websites, I'd discover websites, uh, I'd find a website, and maybe I'd, I'd, I'd click on a page, click on other pages, and within that website, I'd find links to some other website, and then another website, and another website, and that's kind of how you, you know, you 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 went through the web, right? So you had this. Um, we, we've gone from like exploring the web to somewhat um, having a, a, a more guided experience, right? Um, Facebook and Twitter tell us what to to read. Spotify tells us which music to listen to. Um, we have Instagram that tells us which whose pictures to look at. Uh, we have Reddit to tell that tells us which links to click on. And exploring has been replaced by curation. Right, uh, much of which much of which is automated. Um, think about it. When when you went online this morning, did you open a website or did you open an application? What was the first thing? And maybe 20 years ago, that was a website or a couple websites because we had these things called bookmarks. And I don't know how many of you guys still use bookmarks, but I use a whole lot less. Um, so in, instead of hopping around, you know, different websites, we're more you know going out from a central place to a, a web page, coming back, going to another web page, coming back, and then another web page, and coming back. So we're, we're having very uh, central sort of, um, well, I, I guess, platforms that guide our experiences. Uh, and for something like WordPress, that's a very, very big change, right? Uh, WordPress is a great tool for publishing content, but back in the day, it was also something that was great for distributing content, too. Um, but with the rise of social platforms, uh, content has become a lot more fractured in that regard, right? It, it, it's distributed in different places. It lives in, in, on different platforms. Um, it's, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really tie back to the singular website or idea or sort of tangible concept anymore. It's not a singular thing anymore. Um, and, and this brings me to my first point this morning about WordPress in 2018. That WordPress might have been your primary and maybe even your only way of uh, publishing content back in the day. Uh, anybody remember photo blogs, right? I mean, that's, that's not even that old. That's like two, three years old, and that's already a thing of the past. Um, we, I mean, sure, some people still use them for the sake of nostalgia, but you're not really reaching wider audiences in that way. So the, the irony is quite strong because we're here at a WordPress conference. I'm here talking about WordPress in 2018, and my main way of publishing content is Instagram stories. I mean, should I feel shame, or you know, what, what is it? What's the, what does this new world bring? Um, so WordPress is part of this larger playground today, right? Uh, one with, with many social platforms, uh, and I guess very well guarded entry points. Right? I guess that's a diplomatic way of saying it. So I think in 2018, we need to accept that WordPress is becoming something more abstract. And don't get me wrong, um, this is not about WordPress becoming weaker in any way, or shape, or form, but rather adapting as the web evolves. Uh, becoming a hub for structured content, uh, as opposed to you know, playing this, this, this sort of singular visual thing that exists with sidebar and, sidebars and widgets. It's, it's a tool in, in, a, in a big toolbox um, and, and not the solution to all of your web problems, right? Uh, and I think that's an important point to realize. Being online now requires many tools, uh, and that brings me to my next point. And that is that the core, um, or a lot of core features of WordPress are also changing, or rather how we use them are changing. Uh, we used to use WordPress for many more of its core features. And when I say core features, I mean uh, things like the media gallery, comments, search functionality, things like that, things that are part of WordPress itself, not, not the plugins around it. Um, and a, a lot of that is being replaced now by third-party solutions, many of which are not open source, right? Um, so again, that's, a, that's an, an, another change. Um, <clears throat> the, this idea that... <clears throat> Sorry, losing my voice. Uh, this idea that one size fits all is, is just becoming a lot harder to manage. Uh, if, if your comment section or your search functionality are not living up to expectations, you search for other solutions, right? Uh, and I think that's a trend that will continue to grow. So maybe you use Discuss for, for commenting, uh, or even worse, you use Facebook comments. Uh, you know, we see large publishers doing that. Um, 
maybe use Algolia uh, for search because they've, they've got a whole sort of cloud elastic solution which scales a whole lot nicer and has autocomplete and all these kind of nice things. Maybe you extend a media uh, library or you know, media tools uh, with something like Imgex. And even a company like Imgex, that's a fully fledged company that is trying to solve one particular solution really, really well. They are, they are not just a plugin or, or, or a piece of code. They, they are a full team and company that try to solve this one problem very, very well. And many companies online now do that today. Uh, so because there's, there's a lot of specialist tools available today, um, also replacing you know, these core features of WordPress, it's important to be aware of them and how they differ from the standard offering of WordPress, right? Uh, so if, if your website has a lot of content or has complex content, um, I don't think you can blindly accept the default tool. That's like accepting Internet Explorer because the, the, the machine you bought came with it, right? Instead, you might need Chrome with a bunch of other extensions to be able to do the job you want to do in the way you want to do it. Uh, and this naturally leads me to my next point. Websites have also grown significantly beyond WordPress's core offering, right? WordPress out of the box, purely out of the box, does not offer uh, a competitive enough solution in the world today. Uh, and this is where the, the 50 plus thousand plugins that are in the ecosystem help to extend WordPress, right? We all use plugins that they're what make uh, WordPress so great and are able to solve so many use cases. Um, <clears throat> But I feel that much of the, the work that's being done in these 50,000 plugins uh, is also being offloaded to third-party services. So they're not really part of the WordPress ecosystem anymore, but they're something larger. Uh, so instead of us as web developers creating custom functionality or setting up a certain plugin, we might just drop you know, three lines of code in there and say, ah, that's it. You know, like I've, I've, done my, I've done my work. Uh, you might use. Oops, let's see. Yeah, cool. Uh, we might use something like uh, Typeform, right, for forms, because we want rules, we want advanced reporting, things like that. Uh, we, if, if, if you want to use an algorithm to decide when is the best time to send each one of your uh, newsletter subscribers their email, you might use something like MailChimp, right? Uh, if you want to personalize content based on a visitor's history, you might use something like Optimizely to, to help increase conversion rates further. Um, and, and personalization is an in uh, interesting case because that's a rather newer sort of concept or, or, or feature that websites have today. And we're seeing that the WordPress plugins that try to compete in that space are having a very, very hard time. You're not going to see personalization plugins being created today match to the same brand size as Yoast or Gravity Forms uh, or EDD or anything like that. It's just too competitive. The amount of value that WordPress itself generates then, uh, compared to the wider picture, is becoming smaller and smaller. Uh, and a big part of that is, is also because expectations are becoming larger. Right? What, is, what, does, what creates a website that is competitive? It requires a lot more than what's ever existed before. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of validation for what I'm saying here. Consider this. Uh, hosting companies, right? They used to talk about how much CPU uh, your server gets, how much RAM, how much bandwidth, and that kind of moved over to something like one-click WordPress install. And that's also not good enough anymore. Now it, it, it needs to be this inclusive ecosystem where WordPress is not only there for them, for anybody using the hosting company, but it's also play, it also plays nice with a lot of other tools. So not only uh, is, is a hosting company today giving you hosting, uh, but it's also trying to provide you with a user-friendly and competitive site builder, right? So the, 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 the landscape uh, in, in terms of how, create, how we create websites and the kind of websites we build is changing. And to me, that creates a very, very interesting dilemma, right? Because um, where, where certain features were part of WordPress plugins, um, it, it, was, it was the web developer's responsibility to install, possibly manage, customize, do things like that. So consider, like, let's say, um, let's take, um, you know, uh, I guess, Gravity Forms, right? Like, that would be something you'd have to set up and manage yourself, uh, potentially, for a client. But all of a sudden, since you dropped in MailChimp, um, that, that responsibility might have transferred back to the client or the business. Right? Um, so should someone who builds websites um, 
or small to medium-sized business websites, let's say, um, also take an interest or responsibility for all the tools that are associated with it, even if they were part of WordPress before? Um, or do we simply do less because WordPress and its most immediate ecosystem is also doing less? So I, I guess an interesting question is, were we all previously uh, these sort of part-time product managers without even realizing it? Um, or, yeah, I don't know. Let's take a big step, a step back. Um, what is the problem you know, we're looking to solve for any given client, right? Yesterday, it might have been the entire web presence, and today, you might be hired for custom development on the WordPress site. So a very specific thing, a, a very a niche part of the entire presence as opposed to the entire thing before. Uh, so the, the roles and responsibilities, I think, are shifting in a big way going forward. I think that people who consider themselves web developers uh, will also need to you know, start taking broader interests uh, in, in terms of product management, um, understanding all the moving parts that contribute to growing a website, growing its audience, increasing conversion rates, that end-to-end -end experience for users. Um, so anyway, I've talked a lot about WordPress and, and how it's becoming uh, different in size and, and, and how it's different or its relationship to the ecosystem is changing. Um, but how does WordPress fit into the bigger picture in the future? Uh, and I think the answer is content, content. Inputting it, storing it, and sending it out again. Uh, the REST API, which I, I talked about here last year, actually, uh, was a big part of, of, of WordPress um, in, in, this, in this direction in terms of contributing to making WordPress a, a, a stronger foundation in terms of managing content and what it, it's able to do with it. Uh, but it's not exactly a user-friendly tool, is it? So now we have Gutenberg. Gutenberg is the answer to that. Um, and I think it's something that we can expect sooner than later. So sometime in the first half of 2018, I think we can expect Gutenberg to be a part of WordPress core. Gutenberg is what will become the new editing experience for WordPress. Um, if you haven't seen it, well, here's a short video I've made. It would replace the tiny MC that we all have come to know now uh, with the intent of being more user-friendly, but also putting more power into the user's hands, giving them more control. If you've used Medium before, I guess you can say the aesthetic of it uh, or the experience of it is comparable. Uh, Gutenberg is built on the idea of blocks, right? Uh, it's a singular concept and a new way to manage what was previously done with short codes, uh, custom HTML, uh, various embeds. And this is, this is a very nice way of handling that in a, in a, in a linear fashion for people who are non-technical. Uh, this change is really, it's, it's absolutely great for end users. You know, we've demoed it to, to clients in, in sales meetings because oftentimes when we go to, to, to pitches and meetings, we're not only selling human-made, but we're also selling WordPress. So we, you know, we've experimented with demoing Gutenberg, and it's worked very well, uh, because everybody in the room can uh, associate with that. Uh, and I'm personally feeling good about Gutenberg. I know there's a lot of challenges in terms of it being released and being shipped, um, but, it's, but I have faith that those things will be figured out uh, by the time it's released. So this is a big step for WordPress, uh, a very big step, uh, and it's also why there's a lot of controversy around it. Uh, but it is, it is important for WordPress to remain competitive. Uh, Gutenberg is a big part of that. If you think of WordPress as a car, um, all the internals work really well. They've been there for a lot of years. They're tried and tested. Uh, it's, it, it's stuff that we all, we've all come to know very well. Uh, but if a consumer doesn't like how the outside of the car looks, then they just won't buy it. Right? Uh, and Gutenberg will be a, a, a big step in changing that perception. And a, a lot of that is not only because it, it looks visually different, but because it puts a lot of power back into the hands of the end consumer. Um, so the best thing I can tell you today is download the beta, use it on your local site, use it on your personal site, use it wherever you're comfortable using it. Uh, if you have uh, clients which are a bit more technical or a bit more uh, lenient and, and don't mind a couple of bugs here or there, also probably a good idea to use. So definitely install that. Uh, so let's sw switch tracks a bit. Um, as the web is evolving, so is uh, the way we work, right? Programming, marketing, all these sort of like online jobs, they're becoming uh, extremely popular. We 
you know, I got into programming back in the day because I wanted to program websites, and a lot of people now get into programming because they want a different lifestyle, right? So there's, it, it, it's, it's, it's achieving or uh, it, it's, being, it's being able to acquire much larger audiences in terms of interest. Um, this idea of you know, commuting for a couple hours a week or only being able, sorry, a couple hours a day rather, or being able uh, to only take two, three weeks off and to visit other countries per year is a very limiting thought to people. Uh, so this, this idea that, hey, we can work online is, is very empowering. Uh, so we're seeing a lot more people enter the space. And with more designers, marketers, and developers in the market, that also means that the market is maturing. Right? We're, we're seeing a lot of structure around it. Hiring a, a, a freelancer or, or an agency today is a lot less of a gamble than it was back in the day. Uh, there's a lot less guesswork involved, if you want. Uh, and in that way, development is almost becoming a bit more standardized or even commoditized, predictable. Right? It's becoming more of a sort of a, a, a normal thing. And also here, as I talked before, we, we have platforms and gatekeepers, right, that sort of are starting to manage these things. We have something like uh, Fiverr, right, where you can build, you know, buy complete websites. Uh, we have Codable, where you can hire WordPress developers. Um, and, you know, here again, you can see uh, Gemma has five, a five-star rating out of 390 projects. That inspires a lot of confidence towards a buyer. It makes them feel good about being able to say, okay, I need a developer for this. No, this, this, this one will probably do. I don't need to think about this or manage this too much. It's a very standard experience. Um, Toptal, same thing, right? So there's a lot of platforms and, and systems around to help the market purchase these kind of services. So if the only thing you do today is WordPress, uh, I think you'll start facing a lot of competition. Uh, competition leads to lower prices, uh, and especially the standardization of development work does too. Theme development by itself, I don't think, is, is enough anymore. Um, it has to tie into to the wider picture, the end-to-end -end user experience I talked about before, or it has to be uh, uh, deeper in the, t uh, in the dev stack so that you're doing more things on the front end and the back end. Um, I don't want to say too much here, but I think the one thing I'll still say is that in, in a world like this now, where we're going, you don't want to become the Uber driver of WordPress, right? Like there's, sure, you have, you're your own boss, or at least you think you are, you have flexible hours, uh, but at some point, your prices are going to be pushed down, and you might be replaced by robots. So <laughs> we, no, none of us want that. Um, so definitely, you know, think about how your role and the work you do ties into the larger web. So. I know I've been talking a lot about how WordPress is becoming smaller in, in, in the grand scale of things, um, but, or rather, in the presence it sort of occupies. I think that's, that's more accurate. Um, but it's still growing, and, and that's amazing, right? And that's why we're all here, and that's why it's, uh, we're, we're going to have a lot of fun today. I hope you meet a lot of new people. Um, but growth can also be uh, misleading in ways, right? WordPress growing doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a larger supply of customers. Right? It also means that a lot of these hosting companies are doing the right thing by providing this sort of inclusive bundle where they have the services, they have the tools, WordPress is pre-installed, and there's, there's a different sort of uh, feeling to the whole thing that empowers people to easily create websites. Um, and also remember that certain services that WordPress used to, uh, I guess, handle in the past are now being offloaded to these third-party cloud services where the business or the user uh, is, is taking that responsibility back because they do have the ability to do that now. Uh, they're going to manage their own newsletter or, or, or subscribers instead of you being paid to do that five hours or ten hours a, a month now. So what does this mean for, for going forward and you know, for, for our roles. Um, so I think if you're a developer, you know, I, I've, I've just touched on this before, um, you want to either deepen your knowledge of, of the stack uh, and, and be a, a, a much more well-rounded developer, front and back, um, or you, you broaden your, your product uh, management skills. You're, you're able to understand what is the problem of the website, right? I mean, websites in, in the past, they're, they're, the only problem you were solving was that they needed to exist. Someone was happy for the sake of like, ah, oh, I have a website, cool, you know, like, I'll pay you money. Uh, and today, uh, that's not that easy anymore. Websites have to convert. They have to have a business purpose. They have to validate their costs and expenses and be profitable. Um, and product management feeds into that. 
It's, it's, it, it's something that I think a lot of us will naturally become. If you own a business, um, I, th I think we will need to market ourselves more. It's a competitive environment. Um, I think there's also a lot of opportunity in productizing lessons learned. Uh, so we're seeing all these microservices I talked about, these cloud services. Like I said, they all do one thing, but they try to do it very, very well. I think there's an opportunity for many of us in this room to be able to tackle those things too and be a part of that rather recurring and sort of scalable income. Um, and the real winner here is the end user. It's the client. Right? They're benefiting uh, from, from WordPress's growth and market domination. Um, I mean, it's, it, it's a fully mature platform at this point that's able to solve a, a variety of, of, of diverse and complex issues at a very, very affordable cost. Right? Um, so em embrace the web, uh, especially events like this that tie everything together. Um, there's, there's, there's plenty of other tracks. There was great keynotes here before. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it shows us how, how broad the web is and how it's all interconnected. Um, and with that said, you know, I'm looking forward to celebrating WordPress in, in, a, in a new year with you guys. And thank you for your time. <laughs> Questions? So, um, amazing talk, really interesting. Um, Thank you. I have one question, mm. uh, out of a lot of, but I can't, <laughs> I can't take all the time. Um, which, if you can only start and focus on one thing, which thing would you think is the most important when it comes to adapting from being the uh, Uber driver, so to say? Uh, oh, yeah, great, great question. I think it's about solving the problem. What problem are you solving? If because when, we, when I started on the web and I, and I was creating, I don't know, I, th I think I created my first website for, oh man, this is embarrassing. I think it was like $30 or something like that uh, back in Switzerland, which is already nothing. Um, I was really solving a problem. You know, it, it was end to end. It was, I, the, the person said, I wanted to reach this audience and do this with, the, um, w with them. And today, that, that sort of problem is, is much larger. It's much wider. It ties into analytics. It ties into uh, user experience, conversion rates, how people are finding the website, how they're doing that. And having knowledge of, of that full sort of spectrum is, I, I think, very, very powerful because you understand how everything ties together and you understand how your specialty work and the, the work you do ties into that and where your value um, lies. So I guess that's more of a product management approach than the, the deep dive developer one. I'm not a developer, so that's, that explains that. But that's, that's, where, that's the direction I would go. It, it's all about making business value, basically. Yes, so. always has been. So. I think we have questions in the audience. I'm guessing so. I hope so. Uh, okay. So everyone, don't be afraid. Raise your hands. I have mic runners up here somewhere. They should be ready. If we have any questions. Fire away. Don't be afraid. He's, he's not I'll, I'll buy the first person a beer. <laughs> yeah, we, go. we have a question up here. Yeah. Could you have a mic? Yeah, so uh, it doesn't uh, seem uh, so. You can say the question, we'll repeat it for the stream. Ooh, so so there's, there's a lot in there. Um, I, should, should you, you repeat want, it? Or, or, no, 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 I've, I think it was the longest <laughs> question I've ever heard. So, <laughs> um, so in short terms, the question was, how could you make the side dynamic for those who are experts? Or uh, yeah, make it easy for those who are not that good in editing? Um, 
Yeah. yeah. No, 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 I, 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 I got you. I, um, it's a tough question. Um, so so to, to the dynamic part, uh, just a, a, a sort of note, um, I think what makes WordPress great is also its downfall to other people because they've been provided with too much flexibility and then they tear the entire website and platform to shit that you've built for them. Uh, and that's just the unfortunate side effect of giving people that much power. Um, towards content itself, that's, that's a whole different ballgame. Uh, WordPress is, is just there to... It, it, it's, uh, al WordPress is almost a highway for content, right? And so it's, it's, it's storing it, it's, it's parking it, it's sending it out again down the road, uh, and it's, it does a great job of that. And then there's, there's visual layers to that, like Gutenberg, that allow uh, very non-technical people to add more content or edit the content that already exists uh, on that platform. And I think there are opportunities around that. So being able to give non-technical people or people which are not the best uh, in, in terms of managing content um, ways to create structured content that allows the platform to live on in a healthy manner. Um, I know that sounds sort of abstract, but that's, that's the best answer I can give you. <laughs> Pleasure. Uh, we're running a bit late on time, so we only have a few minutes before our next talk. Um, so we can have one last question, and afterwards you'll have to basically grab in, buy me a beer, and <laughs> ask questions afterwards. Yeah. Uh, hey, th uh, thanks for your talk. Uh, I Pleasure. thought it was great, um, particularly the integrated approach to WordPress and how it fits into other tools and yeah. software as a service. Um, I run a content marketing agency myself, and so it, it kind of really, um, really lit me up there. Um, the one thing that really stood out to me is this Gutenberg release, and I wondered what your thoughts were in how this fits into the landscape with uh, page builders, content editors, uh, you know, the rise of um, these new new tools that people are, are being given to. Yep. Uh, create yeah, no, great question. Yeah, yeah great question. Um, so, so one thing I didn't mention, which I think is worth mentioning, is that uh, the page builders we have today, uh, so things like Site Origin, Visual Composer, v Beaver Builder, and all of those, um, took on an enormous task to try and solve a problem that was more or less unsolvable, because not one of those solutions will actually solve your particular problem for your particular client needs. Uh, so they, they've done an. an incredible job bridging the gap until, I guess, Gutenberg arrives. So the one thing is Gutenberg will probably remove the need for third-party page builders uh, in a large way. Um, but as you say, like it's, a, you know, it's, it's comparable, you use the word site builder or page builder, like that's, that's what it is, uh, or what it will become. Uh, I think a big part of this is for WordPress to be competitive on a consumer level, uh, to be accessible to end users and non-technical users, so that they're able to enter content, in, again, in a structured manner uh, and, and feel good about it, right? So that they have a positive experience doing so and that you're able to give them more power to do, uh, sorry, more power to do so as opposed to you having to manage all of that. Um, so it's, it, it's we're removing friction that didn't need to exist. So it's, it's making the platform better, I think, for the long term and putting responsibilities where they belong in, in, a, in a long way. Uh, because you'll be able to customize Gutenberg or the blocks that exist, uh, or tailor the blocks, or custom, or provide new blocks, uh, completely new blocks, so that the, the the customer can can easily create these things without, you know, mistyping a short code or or missing a, a slash in custom HTML or something like that. So, overall, I think it's a it's a very positive uh, change, e even for someone like yourself, so that you can focus on conversion rates and they can focus on inputting things like content. Great. Okay. Thank you for the talk. Thank you. And uh, give him a big applause. Okay. I have only a hug to give. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.